I can't believe it's almost been two months since I've been using the Galaxy S24 Ultra. And quite frankly, I haven't had the urge to completely remove my SIM card from the phone. Now there has been a couple of times I've gone back to the OnePlus Open because I do love that form factor. But most of the time, since this phone was released, my SIM card has been inside of it. It's just a solid package. You know, and I've been happy with it so far. And I wanted to do a longer review for you guys. So to make sure that if you're considering it today, it's still a good option right now. Now, this has been babied. I've been replacing it in a case the entire time because I'm a klutz. If I drop it, I will break it. It's just my nature. And look, there's no scratches on it. The only thing I can really complain about, and this again is very minor, is that there's smudges on the left and right side of the phone. Like it's just the way the coating is. It's going to pick up fingerprints. It's going to pick up the cruft that's inside of the case. Now, if you're curious what case I'm using, and again, this is not an ad or a sponsorship, I just bought a simple case off of AliExpress. It's thin. I want it to be thin because this phone is absolutely massive and adding any more bulk to it is just crazy. So I bought this like carbon fiber case off of AliExpress and I love the way this thing feels. Now, I think the biggest drama around this phone has always been the display. Like this is a beautiful, big 6.8 inch display, but there were just a lot of complaints that you couldn't change the saturation. So they obviously updated in one of the previous releases not too long ago and you can go into the settings now and you can actually manipulate the vivid profile and make it significantly more saturated now here's the weird thing okay when i looked at this phone for the very first time before the previous update it was already saturated enough but everybody was going nuts on the internet saying this is too dull like have you ever seen this screen beside an iphone it's always been more saturated. And the fact that you want to make it even more saturated now is crazy. Like you're just gonna get the most unrealistic colors. But look, here's the thing. It's still gonna look a bit more dull than the S23 Ultra. Even though technically this is a brighter display, because the material they're using is reducing the amount of reflections that hit the display panel. And when you reduce reflections, you are reducing the amount of light that's coming in. So no matter what you do, if you have the S23 Ultra cranked all the way up, the brightness cranked all the way up, the phone based on your eyesight is going to look a bit more brighter than the S24 Ultra. But you know what? I'm okay with that because this phone still looks bright enough. And trust me, I've been in so many situations where I'm watching content and there's just no reflections on my screen. But if I had the S23 Ultra, I would see those reflections. And if I'm watching something for 30 or 40 minutes, it would start to drive me crazy. So I do prefer this type of material instead. Now the speakers have been okay. I still think Samsung could produce better sounding speakers. They do sound a bit hollow, but they're fine. Like I'm not gonna complain about them too much. Uh, the front facing camera is better than last year's model. It just has more color in my skin now. There's more vibrancy. I look normal, not pale and washed out like previous Samsung phones. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 inside of here has been great. I haven't had any issues with it. The phone has never crashed. There's never been a glitch. It's just been smooth, smooth the entire time. And when you consider the size of this screen, this 6.8 inch beautiful display paired with a good size battery, it's a recipe for amazing efficiency. Like some days I'm ending with 50%. That's a light day. It's a pretty light day. Heavier days anywhere from 30 to 35%. Sometimes I don't even charge this phone every single day. I'll just let it go for a day and a half and then be like, oh, I'll just charge it now because this phone allows you to do that. Now, the one thing that people do talk about is the AI. And look, here's the thing. You know, it's cool that they're adding it. We're going to see a lot more going forward. Like from every smartphone manufacturer, AI is the talking point from every company. But there's a little fine print on Samsung's website. In 2025, they might start charging for it. Now, here's the thing. If they start doing that, other companies might not, and then there'll be competition or it'll become so commonplace that it'll just be part of buying the phone. The good news though, is that I'm not using a lot of the AI features that they just introduced, like circle of search, really freaking cool, but I'm not really using it that often. The only thing that I'd probably want to use if I traveled a lot is the interpreter, but I haven't really been going anywhere except for English speaking locations. So if they do start charging it in 2025, 
some people will be upset, but I don't think we should worry about it too much right now. One UI has also been fantastic. It's just been smooth, you know? Like if this was TouchWiz from 10 years ago, I'd probably throw this phone outside the window, but Samsung has come a long way with their theming. Like it's not my favorite, but it's good. Like it's acceptable. I'm not hating it like I used to. And it just works very well with this style of phone. The one thing that I love about Samsung is they always include everything you want. Like literally everything you want from Samsung Dex to mirror play to any type of play. Like it just has it somewhere in the settings. If you look hard enough, you'll be able to find it. It's kind of like the Swiss army of Android phones. And they just do such a good job of tying it into one UI. Now this is running the latest update. So it does have all the new camera enhancements. And this is my takeaway from it. The camera wasn't that consistent before, and it's still not that consistent now. This new update makes the photos look even more punchy, a little bit too magenta at times. And some people might like that. And if you do, it's completely subjective. It's totally up to you. But I still feel like Samsung has a lot of tuning to do with this camera. It's not the best camera experience out of other phones on the market. It's a good camera, but it's no longer at the top. And I just feel like until they can make it 100% consistent, I'd feel more confident using it. They still have the shutter lag problem. They still have situations where there's a bit much to hue. And obviously the video is really good, but it's not the best video on a phone. As for the S Pen, I haven't used it since my initial review and I probably won't use it until my next review. And the reason being is just, I'm not an S Pen user. I've never felt like I needed a pen on a smartphone. And again, this is a me problem, right? Like some of you out there buying Galaxy devices are purposely buying the Ultra for the pen. And if that's you, then you have a totally different outlook on this device than I do. But it's just not something that I need or I care for. What I do care for is the complete package. And I feel like Samsung has done that again. Flattening out the edges was great. Continuously improving the camera will make it even better. The software is working well. The design feels great to hold in the hand. You know, it just looks good, even though it's a squared device. It's not perfect, but I think, you know, everything is almost there. I think by the end of the year, when Samsung adds a few more software updates, which they're known to do, I think again, we'll see this being a possibility, a contender for the best phone of 2024 again. And I'm really excited to be there if that happens. Either way, I'm going to continuously be using it. Maybe not for the next six months, just because other phones are coming into the studio, but I'm going to be doing another Outlook maybe around six months to see if anything has changed. But yeah, if you're looking at this device and there's still great deals going for this phone, like you can trade in a device, reduce the amount to pay for it, or just get a really good deal, I think it's absolutely worth it. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.